shot the whole time. Oh my god. Ah, I filmed three videos. Wow. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the miscellaneous channel where we do miscellaneous things. I'm Zeleni. So today I wanted to talk about a new show I've been watching recently and sort of my first impressions about it first of all and second sort of comparing it to similar shows of its genre that have come before it. There's only been three episodes that have come out so far and it is called Cruel Summer on Freeform. Sorry, I always want to call it ABC Family because it used to be ABC Family when I was growing up, so freeform. <laughs> uh, the show's called Cruel Summer, which I do wonder if they like, did they know that was a fan favorite song off of Taylor Swift's Lover album? I just always see the pop head stands on Reddit be obsessed with the song Cruel Summer by Taylor Swift and mad that it wasn't a single because it was like released near the summer or something. I don't know. That's originally what I thought of when I was getting ads for this show. I was like, the Taylor Swift song? No. And I got targeted hard for this show. I don't know if y'all if have similar media consumption habits that I do. Um, you might have been targeted by this show. Raise your hand if you've been personally victimized by cruel summer ads. Um, so quickly in those ads, I started noticing its similarities to other shows I have watched before. So that's what made me intrigued about it. It's shows that I have enjoyed in the past. Namely, I'm going to talk about three that is similar to. Cruel Summer basically employs this trope that is common in especially teen-centric shows uh, or teen-centric dramas, I'd like to say. And that is the small town true crime teen centric mystery TV show, which there have been many successful and unsuccessful ones and attempts at this genre. But it's a very specific trope that occurs a lot. And I think it's because I think the juxtaposition of like an idyllic small town where nothing bad ever happens and something so dark and sinister happens and the whole town freaks out and everyone's a suspect and uh, everyone is, has secret second lives behind the curtain and all these things that are just like juicy and make for good conflicts for a fictional reality. Not a fictional reality, a fictional TV show. So Cruel Summer is sort of like the new attempt at this trope or storyline. Spoiler alert-ish for the premise of Cruel Summer, um, but if you're not sold on it, you might want to watch this and figure out if you are. So I want to start off talking about how this show differentiates itself and tries to be unique compared to these other shows. Um, I think the most successful shows of this trope have been Twin Peaks first. Honestly, there's probably stuff before Twin Peaks, but that's like the oldest one I think of. Then we had Pretty Little Liars when I was a teen, and then Riverdale when I was in college. Sorry, those are bad time frames. Those, I should give actual years. Twin Peaks was in the 90s. Then we had uh, Pretty Little Liars in 2009, and then we had Riverdale, I think in like 20. 15-ish? 2017. Yeah. Wait, 2017? Damn. Okay, now we have Cruel Summer in 2021. I'm not sure if Cruel Summer will make it. We'll see. I find, like, it is promising, but also... I don't know if it has, like, the star power, but I'll get into that. Cruel Summer is a lot like these other shows in that it involves a sinister crime happening in an idyllic mostly white small town. We have several characters that all have like convoluted lives and secrets and things like that. So that's how it's similar to those other shows. The way it differentiates in itself is pretty interesting and what I found most intriguing about the show so far. First of all, it is set in the 90s. So while Twin Peaks actually is from the 90s and set in the 90s, Cruel Summer places its characters in the 90s, which is like it's kind of silly when I watch it because there are moments where I 
can tell the 90s are romanticized in a way that is like not realistic like everyone's wearing like a tied up flannel around their waist and that is 90s style but it's like it's a little overplayed, but I get where they're going. They also go hard on the 90s soundtrack. The main way it differentiates itself, and it's a very interesting technique and format they're doing, it's honestly a bit experimental for teen media to be so edgy with their show's format. I'm not talking about the content at all. I'm talking about the format. So the way they format this show is... We have a protagonist and her name is Jeanette and Jeanette is a young girl. The way the show is structured is each episode focuses on a certain date like say June 1st 1993 but the episode cuts back between different years so the episode will come cut back from June 1st 1993 to June 1st 1994 to June 1st, 1995. And then the storyline cuts back and forth between those three dates. Does that make sense? It's kind of crazy. It, it's, it's experimental, honestly. I was surprised by this show being so, you know, forward with their editing. And the way that they tell us, the audience, what year we're in, because they don't say it every time. Once, once we're introduced to each year for the first time they don't put the year there anymore we're just supposed to infer and the main tool they use for this is the coloring of the shots so as like a content creator person or tv analyst i find this very interesting and it's like a pretty unique technique for teen media i would say so for 1993 our protagonist is like very nerdy very innocent and the color of the shots and the color correction i'm gonna refer to it as the color correction of 1993 is very warm and bright and just like cutesy is <laughs> sort of the vibe and then in 1994 the color correction is pretty neutral it's like not as bright as 1993 and the co the colors are pretty neutral not so saturated and then in 1995 we have the color correction be extremely dark and contrasted and blue. Think like all the Harry Potter movies after <laughs> number three. And that is to reflect sort of our protagonist and how she's changed in those three years. So our only other indicator of what year we're looking at is seeing our protagonist and how she looks. So basically she's a nerd in 1983 in, in 1994, Jeanette, the protagonist, has become like the popular girl. She's very polished and glam, straight hair and cute clothes, things like that. In 1995, she looks like an alt girl, like a grungy 90s, short hair, dyed darker, maybe a nose ring, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, so I think this show is really playing with like, I feel like it's human nature to be fascinated by like, how someone's life can change so quickly given that we're cutting back from the same date but different years throughout the whole episode of Jeanette and seeing how different she is in each one I think for the audience is so like fascinating and intriguing and why we're still watching and I just found it interesting that they use color correction as the main tool to cut back and forth between the years and they also play a lot with the editing of transitioning between the two. It's not like, if you watch Lost, you know, every time they go into a flashback, there's like a specific whoosh sound uh, to tell us we're going into a flashback. But this one doesn't have that. It like tries to cut like in a smart way. Like if there, someone's watching TV, they'll make the static and then the next year will come up and we have to sort of... Like the audience is constantly trying to figure out what year we're in uh, with this format, but they do it well enough that I'm not like wondering a lot what year I'm in. Let me get into just the premise of the show and say what's going on in these three years. That is like a big deal. Over two years, our protagonist has changed drastically. Her life has changed drastically because 
the popular girl of the small town obviously it's always her like the laura palmer <laughs> of this town went missing she goes missing around the 1993 year so then the popular girl actually this is something they're doing differently with the show as well um she is found alive and safe and she is rescued from the kidnapping situation she was in. In all of the other shows I've mentioned, Twin Peaks, Pretty Little Liars, and Riverdale, the victim of the crime is dead in all of them pretty early on in the first season. And we know that as the audience and the mystery is finding out what happened to this victim and how did they die and figuring out the culprit. It's like a mystery murder mystery but in this one i was kind of gagged they found the girl they found the victim of the kidnapping and they rescued her the popular girl kate is found around the 1994 year so after she is found kate the victim who was kidnapped comes out in a public interview and says that jeanette our protagonist witnessed her in captivity and didn't get her rescued. The whole town turns on Jeanette and she's like this huge punchline and hated, like most hated person in the town for not getting the popular girl rescued at the time that she saw her. The actual mystery this time around is not who murdered her because there's not a murder. Um, it is, is Jeanette, our protagonist, innocent or not? Did she see her or did she not? Because the kidnapper of the popular girl is actually dead based on what we see. So there isn't like a culprit to find about her kidnapping. The big thing about Jeanette, by the way, is that she, she sort of takes over Kate's life while Kate is kidnapped. And that's sort of the main conflict they have. That's, that is the beef. She dates her boyfriend uh is friends with her friends looks like her so like that's why the whole town hates her because this girl apparently saw her and didn't get her rescued and took over her life so that sort of proves a motive for her not wanting kate to be found from kidnapping and i think it's well done like it's hard so the color correction thing i think they do a really good job of telling us what year we're in with the color correction but it can get a little bit distracting when it changes so drastically when you know it's the same house in 1993 it's so bright and beautiful it's a nice warm house and then in 995 it's like oh, this house is so dark, there's no electricity here. And I understand it's like thematically reflecting the character, but it's weird to see the same settings going from like totally different moods that in real life that just doesn't happen. And I think that can be a little bit distracting from the immersion. I don't know if Cruel Summer has the potential to become a phenomenon the way Twin Peaks, Riverdale, and Pretty Little Liars have. Sorry if the angle's a bit different. My camera actually stopped recording. Uh, I ran out of space on my iPhone. <laughs> anyway, I don't know if Cruel Summer will have the same kind of success that Riverdale, Pretty Little Liars, or even Twin Peaks, which was mixed at the time of release. It became a cult classic more later on, but I don't know if it'll achieve that level of success. I don't know if I see the star power in the cast that much. So my phone actually died at this point. I'm just gonna continue with audio. <laughs> I'm having too much phone trouble, but okay. So <laughs> I don't know if the cast of Cruel Summer really has the star potential. I feel like they're a little young, which I know it's kind of weird. And we've had things like Stranger Things and shows like that that you know, showcase kids and really show a lot of success, but I feel like it has to be a really special show for that to happen. I also think like Riverdale, Pretty Little Liars, Swim Peaks all had like more adult protagonists and I do think that contributes to their success. Like it almost feels like if you have enough hot adults in the show, you'll get sort of a widespread <laughs> mainstream success. Stranger Things is an anomaly, but it's also very specific and like well crafted it's very much like a 
fantastical sort of world they've created there. Cruel Summer, I don't know if it has that level of potential. Like, I don't see too much star power from the cast. I would love for them to prove me wrong, sure. But, so I've mentioned, like, some of the issues with it, like, as well. The format it might be too edgy. Is it too edgy for teens? I'm not sure. A lot of the time with these shows, like, the first season is the only good season. Because the first season sort of wraps up, in general, the mystery that intrigued us into watching in the first place. And it happened with all of them, Twin Peaks, Riverdale, and Pretty Little Liars, where the first season was great, and then the rest of it just went totally off the rails. They, they were just trying to do anything scandalous um, to get people to watch. And it no longer becomes this, like, small town idyllic thing. It becomes, like, this small town where so much random crazy shit happens that makes no sense. And that sort of takes us out of it, I think. A lot of people lose interest that aren't hardcore fans. So I feel like Coral Summer will be good in this season if the story ends up really good, but I don't know. It's hard with these shows to make second season. Even Stranger Things struggles with their follow-up seasons, I think, to make a logical next step for the characters and the mystery. But shows like Riverdale and Pretty Little Liars really fall off into dramatic soap opera town and that's all it becomes. So I don't know if Cruel Summer will fall down that path. Honestly, it would be best if they just like made it a limited series and made other, maybe like more of an anthology thing where it's like a different town, different series the next season or something like that. I feel, I feel like that's the only way it'll find like success, more of the American Horror Story model. That's sort of my thoughts on Cruel Summer. Let me know what you think about the show, if you watched it or if you're intrigued by it. It's a nice murder mystery drama that isn't like too graphic the way maybe adult dramas are. I enjoy the sort of teen drama aspect of it and the mystery of it. I love mysteries. So I feel like my main theory, and I've seen a few of the theories, I was going to react to them, but I don't want to do it without video. Um, a lot of these theories are sort of far-fetched in the fandom. I, I'm not in the fandom, but, uh, you know, sort of the fan theories. I feel like it's going to be a thing where, so spoilers ahead, uh, sort of, for my theory about what what's going on. I feel like Jeanette did see her, but it's going to be a thing where she saw her, but maybe she's like, oh, I imagined it, or I don't know. They're really painting out Jeanette to be this, like, secretly evil person. So it's definitely very intriguing. Um, a bit, definitely melodramatic, but intriguing. So if you're into, like, a melodramatic murder mystery, this is an interesting one to check out. It's available on Hulu. Uh, it's called Cruel Summer, and it's made by Freeform. Those are my thoughts. Let me know your theories down below of what is going on. Um, it's definitely a very convoluted story, so they did a good job of having a lot of, like, darkness and secrets and things like that. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm so sorry about the camera thing. It's just super annoying. My phone just decided to die on me and not have storage and all this stuff, so I'm so sorry. Um, please forgive me. Let me know of any other TV shows I should commentate on. I started watching that Baker Beauty, Baker and the Beauty, Beauty and the Baker show on Netflix and I uh, fell asleep to it, so maybe I'll do that next yeah you can follow me at miscellaneous on twitter and instagram to find out about new videos or just turn on the bell notification here on youtube thanks so much for watching and listening and i will catch you in the next one bye